Anyway, one of my favorite things to do is asking questions to people who believe in evolution. So I asked this professor if I could ask him some questions about the Big Bang. He said, sure, what would you like to know? I said, well, sir, you told me 20 billion years ago all the matter in the universe was squished in this little tiny dot, and it was spinning faster and faster and exploded. I said, where did all this matter come from? He said, well, we don't know that for sure. I said, okay, now, sir, hold it. If I told you that I believe about 6,000 years ago God created the heaven and the earth like the Bible teaches, you're going to say, and where did God come from? And I don't know. But you said 20 billion years ago there was a big bang, and you don't know where the dirt came from. So basically, I believe in the beginning God, and you believe in the beginning dirt. <laughs> don't tell me my theory is religious and yours is science. Oh, no, sir, they're both religious. The news media tries to make it look like it is religion versus science. I did a debate in El Paso, Texas here recently, and the news media wrote an article. They said, religious and scientific leaders debate evolution. What is the unspoken message in that title? What are they trying to imply? Can you catch that? They're trying to imply that evolution is part of science, aren't they? No, evolution is a religion. Actually, both creation and evolution are inherently religious. These two timelines is the same information right here. I'll be referring to that throughout the seminar here. I get, cover this thing all the time. The Bible teaches about 6,000 years ago, God made everything. 4,400 years ago, there was a big flood that destroyed everything. 2,000 years ago, Jesus came. Here we are today, waiting for the Lord to come back in about five minutes. This is the Bible view of history. On this chart, one inch is 150 years. That's a long time. The 20 billion year chart on the bottom is a very different scale. But see, both views, creation and evolution, are inherently religious. You have to believe in creation or believe in evolution. The difference between the two, though, is very simple. The evolution religion is tax-supported. That's the difference. By the way, if I was to make that bottom chart the same scale as the top chart, the bottom chart actually needs to be 2,100 <coughs> miles long. That's from Pensacola to Portland, Oregon. I don't want to carry a chart that big, so I made a new scale for the other one, okay? If they want to believe it happened long ago and far away, they're welcome to believe that, but that's not science. Evolution is a religious worldview, and I think it is stupid. So I asked the professor, where did the matter come from? He said, I don't know. I said, well, sir, would you please tell me where the laws came from? The universe is run by laws, gravity, centrifugal force, inertia. Who gave the laws? He said, we don't know that either. I said, sir, could you tell me where the energy came from? You know, it takes energy to make a big bang. Who bought the gas to run this machine anyway? Hmm? He said, we don't know that either. I said, uh, sir, could I ask you another question? He said, sure. What else would you like to know? <laughs> what else? What do you mean else? You haven't told me nothing yet. I said, does Berkeley have a merry-go-round? How many of you know what a merry-go-round is? You go round, round, round to you puke? Okay. He said, no, we don't have a merry-go-round at Berkeley. I said, you ought to get one. You could learn some good science on a merry-go-round. If you put some fourth graders on a merry-go-round, are there any fourth graders in here tonight? Who's in fourth grade? All right, I like fourth graders. I spent the best five years of my life in the fourth grade. That's before they diagnosed ADD. Uh, put some fourth graders on the merry-go-round. I like using fourth graders because they're tough and they're expendable. Um, and we're going to get the high school football team out there to get that thing spinning clockwise as fast as it will possibly go. Now, if you have a digital watch, you may not know what clockwise means. I'll explain it later. We're going to spin the merry-go-round clockwise. The kids are going to go through four phases. They start off in phase one. They're screaming at the football players. Come on, let's go. Faster, faster. Can't you go any faster? You get up around 30 miles an hour. The kids enter phase two where they stop screaming. They just quietly concentrate on trying to hang on for dear life. You get up around 60 miles an hour. The kids enter phase three where they start screaming again. But now they're screaming, stop, stop, please, slow down. Don't stop, though. Keep going faster and faster. When you get to about 100 miles an hour, you should enter phase four. That's where the kids begin to fly off the merry-go-round. Now, when this happens, you will notice a very interesting phenomena of physics. If the merry-go-round is going clockwise, when the kid flies off, the kid will be spinning clockwise until he encounters resistance, like a tree or telephone pole. That's because of a law in physics known as the conservation of angular momentum. You see, if a spinning object breaks apart in a frictionless environment, the fragments will all spin the same direction. It's very simple. It's because the outside is moving faster than the inside. And so it keeps the same direction of spin. The professor said, yes, I understand about the conservation of angular momentum. I said, well, good. I'd like to ask you a question then, sir. If the whole universe began as a swirling dot, like you said, 
Why do two planets spin backwards? He said, that's interesting. I said, no, that's more than interesting. It's kind of hard on your Big Bang Theory. Not only that, six of the moons are spinning backwards. Why? He said, I don't know. Why do you think they're going backwards? Huh. I was hoping he was going to ask that. I said, well, sir, I believe it's very simple. You see, I believe in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and God did it that way on purpose, just to make the Big Bang Theory look stupid. Now, here's one thing that the Christians need to understand. And I, yes, I'm a Christian. Genesis is a remake of Earth because you create things from nothing. Now, Genesis, something was already there. The water was there. So Genesis is actually a, re a remake of Earth that likely something happened. And maybe there was a, a pre-endemic uh, angelic war or something like that. Uh, not not quite sure it'll take a little more research but definitely the earth is definitely older than uh, 6,000 year mark 6,000 years is just the remake point uh, yeah it's just a, it's just a remake point 